It's. I would never say that live on a stream. <laughs> I mean, you ain't seen this tweet. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. It's August 30, 2021. Can't start with weird things here in just a minute. Hello. Yo. Yo. Welcome to Tweets with Justin. We oh, here I sent it to you on AirDrive every Sunday. Tweets. Right. Fresh tweets. Oh, so good tweets. Oh, wait. I love these tweets. It's clearly fake, too. Like, the font's not even right. Like, <laughs> what's this? Funny. No. Hold it's on, funny, Andrew. I'm sending funny. it to you. This tweet that I saw. This is a great segment called Here's a Funny Tweet That None of Us Can Repeat. Okay, well, uh, 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 this is a great bit. And especially for I mean, when we have to actually, get you out of here. It actually is a great bit to just kind of keep the stream alive while we're waiting on people to show up. That's, that's not a bad. Uh... Well, you know, you could do a bit where like every person says one word of a really bad joke. Yeah. A family. Well, that's two words, so you already messed mm -hmm. it up. Yeah. No, I, I, I didn't know how to telegraph the aristocrats. With oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody. I hope that we all had a good weekend. I hope uh, everybody feels restored. I hope uh, uh, we're, all, we're all doing well. Are we all doing well? Uh, I mean, those of us with power. Uh, well, that's true. Yeah, the folk, the yeah, good, the good true. people of Nolans maybe are trying their best. Oh yeah, yeah, that yeah, big, big, uh, big shout out. Hey, to, uh, shout, to all that. shouts out to the clouds that surround a hurricane. I had a great flight back from Orlando, where we skirted the edge of a hurricane. Chef's kiss. Those clouds, good clouds. Super, super dope. I mean, yeah, that's their. It's. There, I assume we didn't go. Through, there are a lot of ancillary hurricane. benefits to hurricanes beyond the the clouds. Uh, are well, beautiful. the clouds are one of them. Breeze, especially in, in South Florida, the breeze when, when there's when there's uh, when there's something off the coast that actually if, is if like. If you have a cat that enjoys the all right. breeze, all right. I'm just gonna do it. inside jokes. No, or just no. I'm inside saying, joke corner hour. No, no. There there are cats that really enjoy the breeze. Yeah, I'll I'm bet, aware. I'll bet those cats enjoy that. I'm breeze. sure they do. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, here, this is great banter. This yeah. is getting us all what, loose. What, uh, what, what is, are uh, some we're of all the other sharing the ball. Of hurricanes? We're all. Uh, no, I would. The breeze pretty much would be the big one. School closing. That was a big one for me growing up because if uh, a tropical storm was coming through your county. They had to shut down school, and a lot of times nothing would really happen. The chances that your name suddenly becomes famous, that's a good one. Because of a hurricane? Yeah. Yeah, like Hurricane Andrew. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, like I didn't know any Alicia's, and then all of a sudden Hurricane Alicia came to uh, uh, Texas. Mm -hmm. I wonder if like the person who actually names it is some meteorologist who's got a lot of grudges. Yeah. <laughs> it's like It's like... Uh, you know who sucks, sir? Dave you, and Jennifer. Yeah, you've had in the Janet office looking at you've them had as he Janet says this. in every list for the last twenty years, and they're like, uh, "Why is, is that?" Be a bad one. This is going to be a really bad one. And what we're, I wonder what we're going to call it. Oh, is that the last donut, Katrina? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that and also, you know that if if you come in with a name past past like F. Like that's that's really when they get bad. Like that's that's you're you're, you're really screwed at that point. Didn't last year Most they have to like restart the alphabet or or the, the, yeah they, they were doing like letters. gamma yeah. yeah. I think they they came up with a backup list for when they run out of yeah. Names. But also, didn't they say that they were going away from names because of that? Um, I, I think they should just sponsor them. You know, yes. Brought to you by NBC. Uh, uh, starting with uh, uh, brought to you uh, by the new Peacock original series, Dingle Dongers, Jerry, yeah. Phoebe. or the new the new Scorpions album. <laughs> yes, yes. Brought to uh, you by Jake Paul's NFT, Pepsi. <laughs> Hurricane Pepsi. 
All right. All right. You ready to start the show? Let's get ready. Yeah. All right, Andrew. I'll catch you in in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Roberts Young. Well, hello, sir. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. A village is terrorized. People are in fear. Sorry, I'm sorry. Look, I'm just yeah, I show Bryce, up every week. Look, we've all been look. talking, and you, your 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 thing with this village is starting to boil over, man. Like, look, they're taking this is all real, the clean this is real water. They're taking eight, all my good water. This is real season eight Daenerys of you. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's a bit also, out of character also, and 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 really really aggressive. When we say village, we mean video village, and the terror is that this reality show isn't working according to plan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's me doing that? Yes, you. Oh, your fault. Big time. Cool. <laughs> so sometimes you read an article and you're like, man, the reporter is just going way overboard because like they're like, man, I gotta I I have to cover this and I might as well just make it everything I can. Yep. So a village is being terrorized by a bandit doing blank. Okay. Bad and improv. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a common problem. <laughs> the shocking turn of events takes, is taking place in the pretty countryside village of Wanarish in Surrey. It's home to just over 3,000 people with residents understandably rocked by the recent incidents. Understandably rocked. All right. Like, I, I, all, right. I, I, all, like, all I know is that Bryce just pulled it up and I can't see what it is. All I saw was Bryce's face and it was a visible look of horror. <laughs> like he 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 just did a silent like oh. I no longer like being the joke the funny joke character at the beginning nope, of the segment. This is Bryce. <laughs> Bryce is whatever you think of whatever this person did, think of Bryce Nescom Castillo. I'm trying to think of what epic anthem conveys understandably rocked. Like you've been understandably rocked, rocked? by a very mild hurricane. <laughs> Oh, there we go. So I'm going to tell you there's something a little goofy about this, too. And the end of it, um, once we know what it is, I'm going to read there. There are two quotes that I think are completely BS, and I accuse the reporter of having made these up. But okay. we have to just do this. We are starting, we are starting wow. hot. Yeah. We are starting no, no, no. hot on the Weird uh, Things Welcome podcast. to Libel, the series. It's a crop, Justin. All right. Let's go. All right. Guesses. Uh, what has these people in fear? Uh, uh, is it human? What? So these the, are people. Okay. Happened. Well, I guess the people are human. People. But it takes but, a village to raise a people. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Um, is it a supernatural creature? We have no evidence that it's not. Yeah. All right, here, can you give me give me the, okay. the, the phrasing of the article again? I, I have to cut off part of it. Village terrorized rocked. by yeah. bandit blank 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 blank. By bandit blank okay. blank blank. So who uh former uh, member of Scorpions? <laughs> former <laughs> yeah, there, it's, uh, it's uh, the who, all right, so but people are horrified by it. I I, I would say, I mean does it involve excrement? Like, are we talking about poo poo and no, pee pee? No, it's got it's got to be like a like a like a crazy raccoon. I don't know. Andrew just gave me the 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 the, the finger before. I don't know. Is it poo poo and pee pee? Am, uh, I, am uh, I on the uh, right trail? No, the, no, it is not. And it's not. Okay. Poop, poop, poop. Well, I took both of them out there. Poo poo and pee pee. Yeah. Well, and now I'm I've said it, so I'm still gonna say a poop flinging raccoon. Mm. No, wow. that's yeah, it's a bandit. Uh, stealing children's uh souls. Uh oh no no no. Uh, uh, ruining <laughs> their MP3 collections. Yeah, just it's changing all the names. It's it's screwing up the ID3 tags. Exactly. All <laughs> so all of a sudden, it's got the wrong artist in the name. On I want to play that gin and juice cover by <laughs> by Ween. By Ween. Weird Al. Mm. <laughs> Oh, it's all still the gourds. There is a word rhymed with something there. You just said, "Oh, ween, mm -hmm. sheen, mm -hmm. peen, no, fiend, no, James ice Dean. cream, no, sheen, uh, no, Philippine, no, cream, no, dream, 
No. Serene? No. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We Zine. <laughs> no. He's terrorizing queen? people with his queen? bad writing. Queen? Disease. Yeah. With his, with <laughs> is his, it Queen? With his, his zero no. his Xerox copies of his typewritten newsletters. <laughs> Bean? Yes. Thank you, spoilers in the chat. <gasps> this is also not the story that I found and reacted to. <laughs> I'm now okay. realizing this. All right. All right. So a bean bandit. Stealing all the beans. Uh, taking it to the bean market, the black bean market. I mean, I understand if they're human beings. I'm not going anywhere near that. Because uh, uh, I no, I no, I'm not. I'm just going to refuse. I'm papering right, right over. You it. ready? Because that would be a human. I'm who, not who got doing it. And not even going near it. Go ahead. You ready? Andrew you ready May. <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> uh village terror i like yeah the, the, the link is so close so on the nose too uh village terrorized by bandit pouring of baked beans through letter boxes <laughs> <laughs> hold on yeah. hold on <laughs> baked bean bandit rains hellfire <laughs> So so what what is hellfire from a baked bean bandit a bake, this is from the uh, metro.co.uk, uh, and uh, this is uh, Joe Roberts. Um, Joe Roberts is clearly um, journalism school paid off. A baked bean bandit is emptying cans of the good stuff all over village in a sticky rain of terror. Okay, all, all, let's count it, the all, puns. Yeah, hold on, hold on. First of all, they're terrorized by it. Also, yeah. a bandit is somebody who steals something. This is just a bad Santa Claus. Ooh, also, yeah. in the a article, vandal, a vandal, the not a bandit. The opening line is. Of the good stuff, yeah. Like, so oh, he, he gets, clearly oh, loves no, British people. Count. British people love beans, man. For real, yeah, count, British yeah, people count, love beans. Count the puns. Brace yourself. Put your seatbelt on, okay? Okay. Yeah. The mystery vandal has been covering doorsteps, homes, and cars with the famous orange sauce, as that's what we all call it. <laughs> Cops are now urging anyone with information to spill the beans. Of course. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. All right, we get we get one sentence without a pun. The shocking turn of events is taking place in the pretty countryside village of Wanarish in Surrey. Uh, More like Slurry. I, I will, just over three thousand people with residents understandably rocked by these incidents. I will I will say in defense of this article, <laughs> it's a nonviolent crime that everybody will. Oh, has, we'll see. I mean, We're going to see if it's nonviolent. Everybody has some kind of connection to the idea of whether or not, like, they found their own personal belongings drenched in beans. Like, so, yes, it, it is tabloid writing, but I don't know. I find it to be a, a more interesting read than if they wrote it straight. I mean, also, let's take a moment and focus on the morality of this. Um, who's more moral? This guy, a bad Santa, or the Hamburglar? Because the Hamburglar straight up is stealing people's hamburgers. Well, you're depriving people of value if you're putting this in their car or just, you know, putting things through a mailbox and destroying yeah. things. Wait, how, how fancy does the food have to get before you join me on my side? Uh, let me... Eggs Benedict? You, I want to read to you the final closing parts, and I want to see who's... Whose, whose side we're on here. Okay. I mean, I, I am on the side of justice. Let me just say, I'm not here to defend the bean bandit. All I am saying it's is... not a bandit if he's giving him gifts. He's a, ba he's oh, a, I'm a sorry. bad Santa. The bean vandal. The, the, the bean, bean vandal. Santa. I'm not calling him the bean Santa. Um, come on. I'm, I'm more... I think the real, the real culprit here is the reporter. So... Uh, <laughs> Can we get back to how bad the writing is? However, some residents have seen the funny side while urging police to catch the criminals. One person wrote online, hope you catch those horrendous criminals, otherwise the house prices and one will plunge, okay? Another <laughs> joked, I wonder if this really took place. What, hope you catch these horrendous criminals. Oh, what half-baked idiots would do this? I hope they get thrown in the can. <laughs> and then somebody else wrote, absolutely Heinz is Kansas crime. 
It sounds like everyone's having a good time. I mean, I mean, it sounds like everybody's having a good time. Ryder's having a good time. The Bean Man's having a good time. Or woman. It's 2021. Uh, uh, <laughs> this does sound like a pitch at like HBO Max. He's like, all right, it's Santa Claus, right? You're thinking Santa you Claus. You and the Santa Claus. Okay. Except it sounds for like a pitch in your head. You he keep gives, saying Santa Claus. He gives to the good and the bad, and it's beans. Huh? That sounds uh, like a pitch for HBO Max. Yes, it does. Not just a thing that's in your head, because it sounds indistinguishable from just a random musing thought that you would have. Well, I mean, look, uh, some of us are really good at pitching to I, HBO Max. I, I, yeah, I'm like, well, the channel that brought you Raised by Wolves. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Beans. Beans. Uh, I just... I just the idea of the writer sitting there and writing that last absolutely Heinz's crime, you know, it's like it doesn't even run with heinous. It's like it's like this is just if I he mean, didn't make uh, that up, what, what you, he shouldn't have used it. You know what happened was he leaned over to the cubicle next to him and and he had a friend who was like, All right, come on, pitch me some stuff. Oh no, that was a tweet. Uh, or that uh, was that was social media chatter. Wait, he wait, pulled that from was, out of his, really we don't we don't know. He, it's it's was online, that wow. wonderful place where reporters can find whatever data details they want. I will oh, say, it was online. I don't doubt it was online, that somebody guys. wrote a crappy line like that and he took it. Like, I, I, I don't know where is the greater uh, 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 sunbeam of dignity that he sun, wrote sun an beam. awful uh, thing or that he found uh, the, that he found it online. Either one is equally bad. Exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know which, which we'd, we'd prefer him to have if we, if we were fighting on Not his side. Not put it in. Not do it. That's. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Although I don't know, what it's a, it's a silly little story about beans. Silly little story about beans. I mean, like, look, somebody got in their mailbox. That's fine. That's bad. Nobody should do it. You shouldn't put beans in in, in people's things. Stop putting <laughs> beans places where they don't belong. England, knock it off. We're looking at you. But okay, Justin Fauci telling us what we can't do. <laughs> I'm, right, I'm just saying, it's just a bad, it's bad bean etiquette. I love Nobody that. wants I love to be fast. that in. Andrew just turned on Justin. This is the best episode we've done. I'm just saying, it's a, nobody likes a beanman. Nobody likes a, a real bodacious beaner. The, the than, beanist. The beanist. Bean, bean town. Bean. Baked beans, man. What are you, you going to do? Stop putting them places. Hey. hey Beano, Beano Factor. Bean. <laughs> Don't be a Mino Beano. <laughs> hey, Patreon.com. up on the bean streets, man. Weird things <laughs> is where you go to support this high-quality program, bringing you <laughs> top news that you would not find anywhere else. Yeah, dude. Uh, we don't get paid like Wall Street. We get paid like Bean Street. And uh, we need a little <laughs> bit of beans from you guys. Just a buck an episode. That's all we yeah. ask. Head on over to Patreon.com slash weird things. Go ahead and crack weird the can beans. open and spill it all out <laughs> on our letterbox. <laughs> a, a can of money. All on our car. I mean, let me get to the Pinto. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> we need your money. And look, I don't mean to rehash, refry all this stuff. I know, I know. You look, can't just say the word that you're replacing because refry yeah, doesn't. I okay. I just want to say if we don't get it, that we're very very hard on each other, and and Brian will give me a black eye. Oh wait, it's a pee. That's yeah, not dude. A pee. <laughs> uh, look, we all love doing drugs, and if we're gonna get baked, we need your money. Yeah, it's a fair point. Uh, Patreon.com slash so, weird things. A uh, different story, a little more serious now. And this okay. is a thing that's gone on for a couple of years. I don't think we talked about can this. We, can, we, can we pause real quick before you set up the story? Uh, I have uh, like Andrew, seven more bean what, puns. Uh, Bryce, what was the thing that you found? <laughs> we, uh, um, is it is it not appropriate for us to transition from such frivolity into whatever horrified you? It's not. It's very gory and bad. Can you text it? I'll text it to you. Text it to me, and this is just going to be me reacting to what, uh, what what Bryce react to, but I will do it on mic because I'm a professional. <laughs> okay, I will email it to you because I'll email it to you. How about that? Okay. Uh, all right, hold on. This is going to be a great it's setup. The, uh, and it's, it's, it's from the French periodical uh, Legumes. Mm. <laughs> uh, but it's from our friends at the, uh, the New York Post. The New York Post. Okay, here we go. It's a bit, it's a bit 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's pretty. I, yeah, I thought we were going a different direction. Oh, my. You thought we were saying that you were this, that this was a bandit? I didn't know. I tried. You Why know, on earth would you think this was a bandit? <laughs> also, I couldn't find the bean bandit. Isn't it? Should I say it or should I text it to Andrew? You I feel we need to text, text it to Andrew. Andrew. It's, yeah, yeah right, just text yeah. it because it's not. Oh, there's a picture yeah, of there's it. Pictures. Oh, there's, God. There, don't scroll. There's way more pictures. It's not great. Um, there's a lot of jeez louise <laughs> oh my god why would you think that he would set this up like that because Christ. when you google that village really terrified. reveals like what you think of andrew <laughs> when you google that a village is being terrorized it shows up <laughs> this and not that, beans yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh jeez <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so uh <clears throat> it's close well, to bean that. The word I'll is read close the headline. To okay. Now let me read the headline. Wait, hold uh, on. Wait, wait, hold on. Uh, Brian, do you want to see? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, uh, um, all right. Scrolling down. Christ on him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeez. No, you can't curse. Sorry. Although you didn't bring this on yourself, Bryce. I didn't. <laughs> you brought this on yourself. That dude has. All right. Okay. Read, the, read the headline. Just uh, Alaska man survives horrific bear attack after being bitten in the head. How would that be a bandit, Bryce? <laughs> a, a well, the village a terrorized <laughs> by a bear. This was in. I mean, a, to, uh, this is in. in, in look, Bryce's Golconda defense, village. They got a picture with the word village on it. In Bryce's defense, this is closer to banditry than the guy who gives beans to everybody. <laughs> 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 like this dude. This dude was robbed of an eye. <laughs> there yeah. was at least banditry happening. There's some. Yeah. So, so you uh, would think uh uh so so in 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 the metro writing of this headline it would be um, big bear bandit brazenly bites hey, beans. Yeah. Let's go buy the guy. <laughs> oh no. The he bears wants... the bears are out for more than pick a nick baskets in Alaska. <laughs> Eye for an eye up in the great According beyond. to one, uh, oh. yeah. according to a man who was attacked, he said, I guess you could say I got a boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> no? Uh, that's and that's some where you're going to leave me hand to hang No, I should. Right, 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 right. the way out. Uh, you got it. You nailed it. Yeah. Uh, uh, poor guy. That's like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and by poor guy, I mean you, Andrew, for having your <laughs> your your news value assailed by Bryce Neshkov Castillo, who believed that that was the story you were leading into. He couldn't have sent me the link. I have to Google everything. I have to Google just what a, I just my what? Best. Just disgusting, Bryce. You're just, just wanna, a disgusting behavior Photoshop. by you. Hey guys, okay, I'm like, like, like he's got rabies, story. but he's just foaming beans at the mouth. <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, uh, please, Andrew, set up the story you were going to say so Bryce can horrifyingly misinterpret this one, too. Uh, it's already pretty <laughs> disturbing by itself. Um, uh, Vice President Harris was headed for Vietnam, and the flight had gotten delayed for a few hours. And the reason it apparently was is, and we talked about the Havana syndrome before. I think we have. Oh, yeah. Is uh, this is, uh, uh, so in Havana, in the embassy, there were a number of people that had, um, Sort of a mishmash of 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 uh, uh, medical effects of uh, 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 fatigue, migraines, uh, confusion, brain fog, difficulty sleeping, uh, uh, all of these things, and it was seemed kind of like a concussion symptoms. Correct, and it was it was supposed last time I paid attention to this, it was supposed that there was a low frequency or high frequency microwave beam. Being a uh, bean, uh, 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 being shot at them, so uh, uh, that was messing with their heads. Uh, uh, but it's unclear because we do know that that the so-called placebo effect is so powerful that it was entirely possible that that they were having a, a hysterical event. Because, for example, in junior high schools, there has been. Uh, uh, once word gets around that there's a natural gas leak or whatever, like all of a sudden it's truly infectious. The panic becomes uh, manifests as real symptoms and, and, and everybody does become ill, but it's not from any kind of uh, action. It's, it's from the hysteria surrounding it. Uh, what I don't know, Andrew, and what I would love to find out is whether or not there turned out to be any evidence supporting uh, that being a, a a black ops situation. Well, we don't know. 
but the thing is, is that, that the first thing was like, oh, maybe it's, you know, it's, it's placebo. But then there apparently there's been evidence of traumatic injuries. They've been able to see dam damage or issues with people like brain injuries, et cetera. So beyond, you know, when you get the thing like the placebo effect and there was like the Pokemon effect kind of things, you know, sometimes those things you could sort of, and I think that it is, you know, one answer was, oh, it's just hysteria. The other answer is like, maybe there is, some unknown factor I haven't thought of, or the idea that it could be some sort of directed sound weapon used by some third party, which all the symptoms like that, that would have been described seem extremely, if you said, okay, if you rule out the other things and said this was intentional, then um, it could be, it could be there's different ways, different frequencies, different kinds of ultrasonics that could do stuff like this. So, you know, there could also be chemical, could be other thing, it, you know, the idea that there was, you know, some bad actor, state actors, or some group from some other foreign power that decided to, you know, F with us. And one of the things is you get, you know, you get smaller countries, you get like, you know, a place like Iran and North Korea, this kind of asymmetrical sort of stuff is kind of sort of what they like to do because, and not to blame them, um, they're not even assuming it's happening, but if it is, but sort of a thing where they can take little pot shots at stuff like that. So, so uh with this idea, and it's certainly been around for a couple of years now, how mm -hmm. un understood by you know uh, uh, science would it would it be? How how, how on the fringe of uh, uh, of reasonability is it? Because uh, it always like struck me whenever I've read about it that it, it it is reported at least as something that is not commonly in use, and this would be a a a novel first use of such a weapon. Um, I mean, there's disclosed and undisclosed stuff. I mean, there's as far as like, well, there's been a lot of research, like you can see, I don't know, Bryce, if you look up, look up like, uh, uh, military sound walls or things like this, these are things we've seen deployed and used, which are large scale ones for like trying to divert crowds, yeah. but you could use a more targeted or specific one. The idea that somebody's building, cause you can use ultrasonic, you can do, a uh, uh, phased arrays to basically like you have a bunch of smaller things that reinforce and you could project stuff to do sound projection. Oh, uh, like uh, infrasound is what I was thinking of that. Uh, that that's the low end stuff. That's the way that uh, allegedly um, uh, in addition to trumpet sounds uh, 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 because they're so large elephants are able to do infrasound uh, uh, waves that create uh, there, there's definitely a known effect at some number of Hertz where it it's below the range of audible sound, but it creates feelings of dread and suspicion, and and it's thought that um, in many haunted houses, there's uh, pipes that happen to vibrate at exactly this sound, and that's why people you know uh, get you know vaguely creeped out when they're in certain places. Yes, yeah, so we're looking at different examples of different kinds, like like crowd deterrent, different sound weapons, and these things are sort of large scale, but the idea that you know, I mean, it's possible. I mean, who, who? we just don't have enough details. And it's like, you know, anything that's sort of involving the State Department or security officials, et cetera, it's like, you're just not going to get a lot of details out about that. Well, and plus also, man, what a, what a perfect um, testing ground where if you want to be a bad actor, that's something that leaves no trace behind that in general, nobody bothers to have sensors to find out whether or not you're underneath you know, a, a, an assault, a sonic assault of whatever variety. Um, it, it, it just seems so low stakes and it would be so hard to find out who did it that if, if you're, if you're any number of bad actors who just quote unquote want to mess with but, the U S people, that's, that's a pretty good way to do it. That being said, we can, we have instrumentation to determine whether or not sounds are happening and what sounds are happening, if not where they're coming from, right? Uh, correct. But those things cost money. And yeah. the question is, do you want to outfit every single place any U.S. actor ever will stay, whether it's in a hotel, whether it's, you know, it's like... It's got to be, got to be an app. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, it, it, if there is, you would think that it would be affordable enough that we would install one right here at HQ. And yet I can't be bothered to do it because it seems so unlikely. And for us to be attacked by a sonic weapon. Uh, correct. And yet, uh, 
Uh, and that? also, we don't He's know like how dangerous. Hey, nope, 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 nope. In nope, your nope. face, we're impervious to sound. But we don't no. like it. God, wait, we, we already have. This is a recording who studio. Feel yeah, very... we harness sound for our. We've broken well, it on our. Whatever. And, mm -hmm. and and we don't. This has been a thing going on for several years. If if I was tasked with like embassy security or something along those lines, you the thing about some of these sounds is you might be able to do things like put up microphones in certain places to sort of detect that. But, you know, you look for patterns, you look for patterns of attack, you look for this, you try to locate when and where and whatnot. And there are ways to sort of track it down, but we wouldn't know what's going on. We wouldn't know, ideally, we wouldn't know what the state of the investigation is. Um, and sometimes too, statecraft is weird. You know, you know, like you'll hear about, oh, there was this big hack. And then like, we, we know who did it but we also know that they did it in retaliation for something else that we did or perceived or whatever. And that's where it gets all kind of like, I, well, I, I think the other thing that was really fascinating about the Havana stuff was that it is this very interesting junction of geopolitical, uh, of, you know, heavyweights and certainly has been in the past. Uh, uh, and, and even continues to be just, you know, it's an interesting place for an American embassy to be. Obviously there are foreign embassies that are very well represented there. So it really could be anybody. Like if you are trying to stir, stir the drink, uh, there would be a lot of possibilities of, of whom it could be. What, what it reminds me of is, uh, in the 1950s and sixties at the height of the cold war, uh, during, uh, uh, one of the flaps where a lot of people were reporting UFOs and strange aerial phenomenon, uh, number one, uh, those, those waves always were in sync with what was on the news. It's on the news that we're going to the moon. People go out for the first time in a long time. They look at the sky. They see weird stuff that they don't understand. And, they reported as UFOs. Also, during the Cold War, U.S. is doing a lot of weird stuff, dropping dummies, you know, out of buildings just to get a sense of, is it possible to survive, you know, uh, 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 however fall, far of a fall, uh, uh, dropping flares and all that stuff. And it's in the military's interest to let everybody be convinced they're little green men, flying saucers and all that stuff. You're like, great, yeah, no, believe that. So uh, weirdly... Uh, for pennies on the dollar, you, uh, in one in one branch, you could be a bad acting foreign entity that does use infrasonic or microwave transmissions and mess with everybody at every embassy, uh, uh, wherever. Or for pennies on the dollars, uh, you can pay to put that story out there, in which case it will achieve pretty much the same effect, which is to make Americans a little bit more on edge and nervous whenever they leave the country to, uh, on whatever diplomatic mission they're, they're, they're doing. So uh, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised either way. I, maybe they did something. Maybe it's cheaper to just instill the fear that somebody's doing something. Did we, we've talked about this before, the, the thing the called in espionage was called the thing or the great seal bug. I don't remember. I, this yeah, is a story. I, yeah, no, no, no. Repeat it, please. So uh, in 1945, uh, right before the end of World War II, a delegation of the Young Pioneer Organization of the Soviet Union presented a carving to Ambassador Harriman as a gesture of friendship, as a you know, in significance of our uh, alliance with the Soviets. It hung in his Moscow residential study for seven years until somebody got curious and they realized, and it is a weird, it is a very suspicious looking thing, too, yeah. by the way. Um, they, they would do like normal, like a lot of times these things, they would do sort of scans or sweeps to see this sort of thing. It, do, it does look vaguely like a magic prop. Like uh, if, yes. if you were to tell me that you picked this up on your journeys to India and somewhere in there was a prediction, I would, I would immediately know that there's something up. Yeah, so when they opened it up, they found inside of there a <laughs> passive system for listening and what it would do is that when you would it was kind of like rfid to you would aim sort of a radio signal you transmit a radio yeah. signal and that would give it enough power so that when things were activated on the microphone you could pick up sounds and it would send it rebroadcast it back out turn it off no power no nothing if you're trying to look for a bug other than the fact there's some suspicious piece of metal in there you would never know i was just listening to uh, an episode of darknet diaries where they were talking about one of the first uh, big uh, 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 moments where America realized that they were behind in some of the espionage stuff was a sweep through the Moscow embassy where they 
tore out all of the uh eventually they they tore out all of the typewriters because the typewriters were logging everything that was being written and broadcast with that same technology holy cow there was when we built the we built the new u.s embassy in moscow and we had to completely gut it because they were doing things they were putting diodes into yeah. the concrete blocks and they went through layer by anything and everything they could possibly do to build it. and that's the thing you kind of forget about when you build an embassy is it like it's not hard to bug these things uh and I suppose back back to my earlier point, um, whether or not these things were effective is almost immaterial in that that they're certainly effective in that they make you <laughs> overspend on your embassies and and defend against things that maybe aren't even being done. Well, I, yeah, I mean, to an extent, I mean, they, you, you know, the Soviets had a sort of a different approach towards control and what they would do, but uh, they they became extremely vulnerable because we had we took this technological edge and like you know it was kind of assumed that like the entire t Soviet telephone system, you know, we would we would go in there and we had it bugged like basically anything that was in like West East Germany, whatever. We had we would go in there, put in our own cables. We'd go into the transatlantic, any type of cable systems they'd ran, they would bug that. And so we had a tremendous amount of electronic and espionage going there, which of course creates the information problem. By the way, do you know the name of the creator of this device? No. Uh, no. Leon Theremin. <laughs> the same of 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 the Connecticut Theremins? No, but best known inventor of the theremin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. Yeah. That's good. And his favorite food? Baked bean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he used to ride a bear around town and scare people with his theremin sounds. You could always hear him coming in the distance. Woo! <laughs> Man, what is so real life, this guy? It is the music. so so so, so f f filled with such frivolity and and uh, uh, such espionage. <laughs> so I have a another story, which is maybe somewhat of kind of a hopeful story. Mm -hmm. um, so don't ruin this that... one, Bryce. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bryce. He keeps throwing you under the. I'm box. just saying. It's not fair. It's, I'm, so I'm just busting his beads. Uh, we've... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good. That one was good. Uh, so we've talked a bit about the ongoing drama involving SpaceX and Blue Origin, and mm -hmm. Blue Origin, uh, Blue Origin just filed has filed like a lawsuit or a protest to try to stop SpaceX from launching, like you know, adding, making an addendum to their plans for more Starlink satellites, because Bezos and Blue Origin they have their project Kuiper, which you know is competitor to Starlink. And so uh, there's been kind of a lot of talk lately about, man, just a lot of, lot of litigious things going on there. Uh, but on another kind of on the technical front, apparently there is a project within Blue Origin called Project Jarvis, where they have a separate team working on trying to make for their, their, they're building their, their new Glenn heavy lift rocket and start this group is trying to see if they can make this thing uh, the upper stage reusable. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And, now, what does that look like right there? Where would you think that we're showing you videos from or photos from? I mean, it, it, uh, well, uh, uh, 10 years ago, I would say that's a grain silo. Uh, yeah. two years ago, I would say that looks like the coast of Texas. And that definitely looks like SpaceX's uh, stage one of, of their, uh, uh, BFR. It's actually launch complex 36 in Florida. I was going to say, yeah, the, the beach origin. looks, yeah, yeah, the beach looks very uh, space coasty. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 crazy. And uh, I'm, again, we're 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 fans of Blue Origin here, uh, and and I do. I'm always excited when I I see them doing big stuff. But I would presume that a lot of the 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 lawsuits are literally just to try and delay as they continue to progress. Right, like that. That this is, you know, if 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 space is truly the trillion dollar frontier, then just try to jockey for position. Yeah, part of it is Bezos had been campaigning for several years for the idea of a return to the moon. Um, 
And if you ever get a chance, watch his presentation he did on, you know, their their plans for going to the moon, et cetera. And he's, it's, he's super excited about space. He's a guy who's been spending billions of dollars on this. He, he'd been lobbying heavily. Part of the reason why, you know, maybe, you know, buying the Washington Post, you know, and, and getting such, not so that they can run your copy as you want, but to get more influence in that town. And part of it serves the idea of like, hey, let's go return to space. For him, the idea that they did not get selected kind of personally stung a lot, I yeah. assume. And so that's why they keep, you know, the, the lawsuits, but it's kind of like, it's sort of like, well, you know, this is it's just kind of getting a little, uh, you know, maybe Awkward. a little bit. Oh, yeah. But anyhow, but I'm excited here on the engineering side that they're working on upper stage reusability. That that's 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 yeah. a pursuit and and it may be a separate team that's doing this that have been traditionally because my if you ask me what I think the problem was with, with Blue Origin is they wanted to create a new space company and they just hired a bunch of old space people and ran it like an old space company. Yeah. And that's what they got. So I got a weird question that I don't know if we've explored before. How would we feel? Uh, at, at this point, you know, uh, Blue Origin is definitely, you know, Pepsi to Tesla, or, or sorry, SpaceX's Coke or whatever. Um, and they're fighting over what seems to be a scarce resource, which is American taxpayer money. Uh, how would we feel if tomorrow Amazon announced, hey, we just signed a deal with Japan. We, we, build and run rockets for japan japan's gonna go to the moon next week like you mean uh, blue origin uh, uh oh sorry did i say space Amazon. Uh, oh yeah. sorry yeah, yeah blue but, origin yeah, yeah blue yeah, origin yeah. Yeah. yeah uh like 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 is there is there any amount of of sort of um uh uh, uh I, I don't know patriotic uh obligation that we have to 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 feel good about that uh i mean it depends like spacex does launches for other countries all the time and as long as you're not violating your ITAR, and if, if let's say the Japanese space agent, JAX, the Japanese space agency came in and said, hey, like, uh, we want to help fund this, we want to help do this. I think that if the goal was, well, we're going to put Japanese astronauts on the moon, you know, that's primary cause. Before that the US. Have, like, 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 like in, in other words, like, it's almost like the space race is happening, only it's two American competitors uh one, sponsored one, by two, one di two, dressed two different like a different country exactly yeah yeah uh i mean obviously the optics and if you're trying to compete i mean a big a big a, the biggest contractor for space launch services is the u.s government yeah and if you are trying to win over people in congress you should not be you want to get yeah you want to get space force launches and do you want to keep doing this sort of stuff You've got to think about that carefully. Yeah, I, I think that the, the the reality of it is that the money's here, and so be it government, private, like like there's there's no one who's going to spend the kind of coin over the period of time that America's going to spend. Yeah, I I I I I, I... <laughs> Prince MBS, first man on the moon. <laughs> now that yeah, I think uh, <laughs> if if you're going to see somebody on Mars, stretch sorry, it, sorry. Like if you're going to see somebody stretch it, then then yeah, I mean you, there's there's certainly some one time use uh, of you know fees, some eye popping fees that could probably emanate out of certain countries in the Middle East. Uh, but yeah, I I wonder if there's not a way to navigate that where it's like let's say you pick you pick all of all of the U.S.'s everybody's on the U.S. most favored nation list. They're you know I don't know I'm thinking Canada some Scandinavian countries, the uh, England, uh, say Japan or whatever. And it's like you form a consortium and all of them kick in cash and you're like, uh, uh, yeah, look, uh, SpaceX, it appears like you've got all that U.S. money. We're going to take the rest of the money and we're, we're also so, going to go. Here's the thing. NASA's budget is greater than the space budgets for every other country combined. combined yeah. Just yeah. about. I mean, it's hard so, to know. So, so some, if, some of the if, defense if the math, things get, make it funky, but yeah. Yeah. If, if, if the math doesn't work out, then that makes sense. Um, I'm, I guess I'm mainly speculating on the, uh, 
the political threading. You're just needle. you're just trying to get us to the 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 uh, uh, all valley karate tournament at the end. Pretty where, pretty much, yeah, or, or 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 just, basically a NASCAR race. You right? want where yeah. it's where it's just like you know different sponsors. Is there any scenario in which right. Bezos could be like, well, screw you, America. I'm gonna go. Right, I'm get... gonna learn from Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, let's go. And yeah. then he's fist bumping the Queen and and yeah, you know, like I live in London now. Like let's go to space, chaps. <laughs> Yeah, I, as long as you're not bringing technology to a country that you're not allowed to bring technology to, you can certainly, that's certainly doable and feasible. And, you know, the other side of it is that, you know, we've been for the past 30 years, we've been in a partnership with the Russians yeah. for a space station. Right. And not exactly the best good faith partners in many cases or situations. I, I, I suppose that's part of the reason that I would even consider it a possibility that, that you could make such an audacious move is the fact that, that we've only had one option for about 10 years. And it yeah. was crazy. There's some people that argue that we shouldn't have done that though. Some people argue that, that because, you know, we, we brought them on board because we, our money could go further there to help provide. And they had a tremendous amount of technological capabilities from the Soviet era. Uh, we don't do any kind of partnerships at that level of China, um, and because we see them as a more clear technological threat. Right. And, the fear right. Well, is that and 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 also they have a fairly well earned reputation for uh, being less than discreet about respecting intellectual property. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you certainly, I, I think that if you phrase it like you're building an international, co you know, consortium to go do this sort of thing, but it just it comes down to where the money is. And, you know, that, 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 and for also working, the advantage of work of NASA is that NASA's got a tremendous amount of institutional knowledge. You know, yeah. the, the, how do we make megaliths so we can make sure that, you know, our, our space shoots aren't going to tear apart? How do we do this sort of stuff? NASA, you know, we joke about how inefficient it can be and whatnot over time, but also, it's got an accumulated tremendous amount of knowledge. The people there, you know, are best in the world and I super mean, extremely they're, 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 There are not a, a lot of data yeah, exactly. that, that you can go through. And there's not a lot of people that are used to working with the kind of budgets that NASA has. Right. Like, yeah. And that, that organizationally, it's, it's hard to just put a bunch of people that haven't, you know, are generations deep in working with gigantic, heretofore unseen amounts of money and scale. The, and, and there's... I just get an example too. Like I watched, I was watching a Scott Manley video and he was showing research into centrifuges in China that affects on, uh, you know, humans. And they showed stuff that the Soviets had done and what we had done. And these were huge room sized, not the guy sitting in the little tiny cockpit, but were room sized facilities that were spun around, like at an angle to sort of like a 45 degree angle to sort of like, you know, get this, to do this sort of, you know, get this sort of other effect to see this. If you go look at like Scott Manley, uh, artificial gravity, Bryce, you'll see some video that's just, I'm, I'm like, you look at the scale of what we're doing. This is stuff we're doing like the 60s. We're building these things and it's really impressive. And the Soviets show this, you know, facility that somebody's walking through and you're like, oh, this is what Kubrick was looking at when he was thinking up ideas for 2001. So like, yeah, we've spent so much money and done so much research over years. Uh, I would like to take just a moment to thank all, all three of you gentlemen for doing the type of show that begins with somebody throwing beans the at beans. cars <laughs> and ends with inter, international global politica, politicking and, and space budgets. It's what we do here, Brian. It's what we do. <laughs> so here's a, we're looking at a video of a guy in a giant hamster wheel that's spinning. And we're looking down as he's walking around. Uh, and so he seems to be walking comfortably, but this 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 is actually, uh, yeah, he's sideways. So yeah. so he's probably at two or three G. That's crazy. Yeah. That's nuts. And then there's a, we're looking at kind of like these spinning things. So and then there's like one of these big the big room size stuff. But then when you get into some of the older footage, you know, there's this uh, thing basically looks like a mobile home. We'll see in another another shot. This is ESA. Which is doing that the european space agency this is a guy testing to see how fast you know how fast they can spin something to um and, you know Before the point at which you out yeah it's how they try to kill james bond Oof. uh what we're getting here five g's uh, wow eight g's oh my god that's too many g's a body weight of like, 720 where did tony kilograms? go there's just a bunch of jello in here <laughs> oh man it's not doing good stuff to his face yeah it's, it's really pushing him back there yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, see if you can scan ahead and find like the the, the large room sized ones. Uh, like I had no idea they built them these at the scale. Well, uh, uh, keep in mind, I, I I do think it's worth uh, remembering that part of the space race was the practical going to various places, but but another part was like the world's craziest PR war. It it, it yeah. was it was like with a straight face, who could act like they they were this close to the biggest craziest thing. Yeah, we had a Soviet cosmonaut. He's now he's in a centrifuge throwing arrows oh, but they're curving they're curving like angelina jolie oh my goodness that's so crazy that's awesome here's this woman walking down to the center of the centrifuge and she's going to walk into down the hallway in this big cool like chair lift oh thing that moves her down to this and then uh this thing is at this this room is at a 45 degree angle as it spins around oh, so it's trying so to counter effect yeah and you just see her like get out there's these guys that the control board like pressing buttons like chimps and that's just and then you'll see this one that looks like a uh uh an airstream trailer you know the interior that's uh, amazing yeah so anyway it's really cool really really cool history of that and uh back to the original story it's uh we want more people doing cool stuff in space we yep. want more of that and the key is in space not courtrooms uh oh eh, uh, uh, eh, yeah. smooth yeah <laughs> uh hey man uh, 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 you got any picks, Andrew? I do have picks. Do you want my picks? Do you want to hear your picks? Uh, I want to hear your picks. Yeah. What are my picks? Stop, stop, stop bogarting your picks, dog. I, my pick is a book that maybe I read a bazillion years ago, and I decided to go back and read this book to see how did I like it. And, and I realized that, man, I really like this book more than I remember, not because it's Watership like, Down. Uh, you know, well, it's, it's, you know, it's uplifting in a depressing sort of way. Mm -hmm. It was a 1980 science fiction novel. And when you read this, if I told you it was written 10 years later, you'd be like, okay, that makes sense. But the way the, what was written in 1980, kind of amazing. I'm talking about Michael Crichton's Congo. Oh, wow. The book, the book gets into, because if you, in the book, forget the movie for a second, please do. The book gets into... It's a race between these different teams to try to get to deep into the Congo where they think there's a kind of diamond that could be used for communication, semiconductors, et cetera. And this is 1980. And they talk about they're using computers and satellite communications to try to figure out which path they need to take to try to get to where they're trying to go. And I understand this is pre-World Wide Web. This is even really, I don't even think the internet's mentioned though it was a thing. You know, this is really kind of, it's a really cool techno thriller about kind of the logistics of trying to travel and get from point A to point B, along with a gorilla that speaks sign language, a mysterious lost city. And the frustration I have with the movie was that like, this was a really, the book who actually had a pretty, it's, you know, the characters are thin, very thin. But the story, the plotting of the idea of like, there's another team trying to get here. We've got to go through this part of the Congo where first it's like civilized areas, but all the political unrest and the governments, you know, the different rebel groups fighting each other. Then you get deeper in and there you've got the different tribes and you've got, you know, descript you know, passages describing, yeah, cannibalism is real. This is still around. It's still a thing that yeah. goes on. By the way, and I think it's like cannibals are actually pretty nice people, <laughs> you know, when you talk to them and it's, it's their culture, you know, which not an excuse so we're net we're no on cannibalism in case anybody's wondering um i enjoyed it I, I really enjoyed the 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 story it's a lot of it like a lot of michael Crichton. it's like here's the process here's the process here's the process but his ability to weave in the technology of it by the time we got the movie you know they made the movie like 15 years later because the success of jurassic park but like it just left out the idea that there was these teams racing there the idea of how you're trying to utilize technology and take better paths to get from point A to point B. They invented villains they didn't need, et cetera. But I think it would be great if somebody wanted to turn Congo into like a eight episode yeah. Netflix series. Cause you know, the because the, the you know the secret is that uh there are some scary killer apes in the middle of where they're trying to go to. I'll tell you what also holds up uh is uh i went back and revisited like a couple of years ago um uh snow crash uh the neil stevenson's breakout novel and and mm -hmm. he admits that he wrote the book intending for it to be a movie and um uh that's why the visuals are so over the top and i went back expecting it to be super super dated 
but it holds up it, it, it for, more for the political reasons like like what seemed like futurism at the time describing eventually what would be the internet in the metaverse and so on um you know that part is is fairly obvious and now but but meanwhile what he's describing is complete anarcho libertarian uh horrific paradise uh, it's, yeah, it's, that, it's insane the one thing that i thought even when i read it was the idea that he couldn't translate hieroprotect couldn't translate the wealth that he had in the online world into the real world and i and that was sort of the, the one like i love the book but it was a little bit of a disconnect because like he's this super big you know entrepreneurial kind of guy in the metaverse right but and, and, in, and nowadays we exist as like oh that's a valuable brand uh, whereas something like ready player one the very first thing the dude does is license action figures of himself <laughs> and makes and he's like all right so now i don't have to worry about money yeah and uh, it's weird wish fulfillment in that book but yeah <laughs> Uh, so I got a pick last week on cord killers. Uh, I as actor recommended hacks on HBO max, uh, over the last week I watched all 10 episodes and I loved it. Um, and I'm still, I'm, I'm going to watch it again to figure out why I love it. Um, it, it, it has a older established character. Think Joan rivers in Las Vegas, uh, Queen of Las Vegas, 2,500 shows established, doing the same act every single night, hopping on a plane, goes straight to QVC to sell out of her tchotchkes or whatever. So uh, stopping if this sounds like something that would appeal to Brian Brushwood. Uh, somebody does a show and then immediately goes and tends to her online store experience um, and, and faces uh, the possible end of her career and is paired with a youngster millennial who um, uh, like, like, like they literally aren't speaking the same language. Uh, she's like, how is that a joke? There's no punchline. Like, no, it's funny because like, uh, like, like the joke I believe is I had a nightmare last night. I had a voicemail and that was the whole joke. And like, to, to the older Joan Rivers character, she's like, how is that even a joke? There's no punchline. I was like, well, the joke is who wants a voicemail? And she's like, and and uh, also the, the youngster takes the gig because she got canceled uh, over, uh, uh, and they say it, it's like, it was one tweet. And they're like, that and uh, 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 57 uh, unnecessary replies that fueled the fire. Uh, it's, I love it. I can't tell which character I identify with the most. Uh, it's, if you know Vegas, they represent Vegas very accurately. If you know the, uh, 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 the entertainment industry, they represent that very accurately. I'm, I'm, I've loved all of it so much. I can't wait to watch it a second time. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I gotta, I gotta dig into it, but great cast, or at least the, 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 the leads are very well cast. It Including, like. uh, uh, Caitlin Olson, uh, from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, really? Yep. Sweet D is in there. Sweet D. Nice. Uh, I have another HBO pick. It's uh, the old the old White Lotus. You down with the White Lotus? Man. Oh, did you finish it? I did. I Here, finished the uh, White Lotus. What'd you think? Uh, here's, ah. here's, here's what I know about oh, White, White Lotus is that it's a murder mystery. And uh, according to a comedy show that I participated in on Tuesday, you, you see some backsides. Uh, that's all I know. Oh, oh! You see some, you see some things. You see some things. <laughs> you see some things. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's extraordinarily well cast. Uh, it's Mike White. So have you ever watched uh, uh Chuck and Buck or um, uh, look look through his IMDb and and you 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 might see something that you've seen Orange County, um, you might see something that you have enjoyed in the past. Uh, that he has either written or starred in. He often stars in his own stuff, although oh, he shoot, is not. School of Rock. Uh, yeah, I don't know yeah. if he was. Did he write that? Yes, he did. Okay, yeah. So um, he's very, very good at human interactions and awkward human interactions, but is never really afraid to kind of dial things up to an almost like wackety, schmackety parody level of bizarreness. Uh, there's some really, really, really good stuff in here. I really enjoyed the characters, and uh, I, I, I don't know if, if you. It's one of those if you watch the first episode and you're into it, then you're gonna be into the rest of it. And if if, if you're not, then you know, uh, uh, it, it, 
calling it a murder mystery almost puts an unfair expectation of the idea that you're always going to be looking and you're going to be fed a little bit. It's going to be like mayor of East town or something like that, where right. the story will take twists and turns. Uh, you, the opening scene sets up the fact that somebody's dead. And then in the like third to last scene, you see somebody die. Yeah. Uh, the rest of it is all about these people interacting. And I thought it was well worth it. Yeah. It's, it was a little bit of a slow burn, but I also really, really dug it. Uh, I got to pick. Cool. Uh, I have really gotten into this over the past uh, couple of weeks, and I, I don't know if I picked this last week or, or not, but uh, I'm going to at least double down, if I have to, on Formula One Drive to Survive on Netflix. Yeah. This show rules. This is awesome. I Like, th- this does the same thing for Formula One that Last Chance You did for, like, junior college football or for or uh, what was it cheer did for the, the competitive cheerleading stuff. Like it's all about the stories. And I think what is really helpful for someone who did not know anything about formula one and me uh, was uh, at some point in the first season, they, they're like, Hey, did you, did you notice that there are only ever 20 people who play in this sport? Isn't that so easy? And, uh, and it really is. And so they, the, the seasons are not set up like chronologically that it's not like here's, race one and race two yeah. it's it's like all based on the characters and the teams so you might spend one up ep- one or two episodes with the ferrari team you might spend a, t- a few episodes with the red bull team here's an episode with the mercedes team and it really helps give you an understanding of like the dynamics what teams do and don't like each other um what like success looks like as well as like like you know uh there are teams that are designed to not do well they're supposed to be on the lower end fodder right um, and, and that also kind of opens up your mind, right? If you think about racing, you think, well, you're supposed to go for number one, but this is like an ecosystem. It's like an ecosystem and there have to be mid tier and low tier teams. Um, I Sounds think it's very cool. European. Yeah, it, it is. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Bryce, you, you yeah. like there are this. winners and losers yes. and we decide who the winners are exactly and as we all we all know from the very beginning at the moment you're born whether or not you're a winner or a loser, a loser. Sure. But, and but, we all play our parts but that makes but yes and that also heightens the excitement when a team that yeah. is does specifically a training team that is meant to take new drivers and give them formula one time wins a race yeah. like it is it's a huge upset when it happens and it's a great moment oh my god it's, it's not moment. supposed to happen exactly <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah. No, i know we uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh bryce you uh. you seem to have been very charmed by these shows and specifically mm. in terms of somebody who is not a, a self-described sports fan uh you have become more and more into the product itself the the actual mm. competitions based on your enjoyment of it. Yeah. Have you ever watched Hard Knocks, the HBO series Hard Knocks? I've watched a few episodes of it and uh, and did not really have HBO, I think, when I watched it. Yeah. Uh, and now I do have HBO, so I should go watch it because I, I do. I'm curious because that is... Is it set up differently? Is it like a different type of show? N- so Hard Knocks is... Uh, and I'd have to check the kind of like template of of the genre, but I think among the godfathers of this genre, of the like real events uh mm. you know uh, uh, being played out but it's an hbo mainstay it happens during training camp which is happening right now in in nfl football it it, it airs weekly and so you're seeing the things that happened the previous week and mm-hmm. so it has like the level of immediacy to it but it is very much in the in the realm of like they follow one or two star players they follow the coaches and then they'll follow the uh you know a few guys that are like on the fringes that are like looking to make the team Mm. and then of course you know some make it some don't it almost has like a little reality show sort of uh a a vibe to it but i was curious considering how charmed you have been with those shows uh uh, whether or not uh that was that was something yeah i i would like to and uh looking by this poster it it looks like they're actually doing los angeles this year for hard knocks and i am a a uh, Chargers fan. A Chargers fan, yeah. Oh, so, well, uh, actually, no. I think that might have been last year. Oh, well, I think they're doing it with the Cowboys this year. Ah, gotcha. Well, then I'll watch last year's. Uh, but but you can watch, yeah. Uh, but 
I mean, to your point of like, you know, you were watching the F1 series on right. Netflix and then I was talking to you on Saturday and you're like, yeah, man, I got to stay fresh for an early morning <laughs> F1 race uh, uh, on, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Like it, it I, helps I, that my like I watched the show because my friends were into it. Yeah. And so that's how I ended up going to attempt to go watch a race or uh, have a brunch watching a race. Uh, over the weekend is because uh, which, which by the way i have found is universal to all sports like my enthusiasm for any sport is directly proportional to the number of friends who are into that thing sure. like, like mm. I, I you know uh, uh, up to and including like baseball like i sure. know <laughs> uh, I, 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 aside from you uh, uh, my daughter penny has gotten into baseball and now i, I hear all the baseball news and, mm. and by osmosis and uh, I, I think if like three more people that I saw every day were into baseball, you I would, would do I would be yeah, yeah fully but, participating. And what was interesting about football, uh, because I watched Last Chance U and got really into it, and then started watching college football and now NFL, was like I don't I don't really think that there are very many people in my like immediate very close circle of friends who like a football who are who who are into it. Um, which is maybe why the Formula One stuff is being fast tracked a little because I have a bunch of friends and it's a, like a really, it's a well known show. Like people, uh, every time I talk to somebody about it, they always say, "Oh, the show's getting more popular. It's bringing more people into the sport and and all that." So, well, and, and it is funny. Like um, I don't I don't know if this is attention focusing on my part, but since watching Ted Lasso, mm -hmm. I have noticed more soccer games on. You know, and it, it be, because like well, that, now we have a team here in town. But 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 right. but, but but they're covering the European, league, you know, the Premier League, and and yeah. I'm recognizing the names, and I only know that world from Ted Lasso. That you you know, like oh, Tottenham Hotspur, like, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and 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 I I appreciate more of the um uh, the nuance of of the sport. That that's what it is. Is like detangling the sport. I think some. I think people see sports and they go that's complicated there's too much i don't i don't get it and what i like about these shows is that they untangle everything right, right? it's like this is what we're doing we're going to tell you what you need to know right now today and now you get this kind of launching off point into the full there the full the full force uh ufc would not be the company that it is today if it weren't for the fact that they branded into uh the ultimate fighter series and that was a reality show that did exactly what you guys are saying where people would follow these unknown fighters. They'd have, they'd have two characters. established yep. fighters be like the coaches of the two teams eventually it would lead to one big final fight or whatever. But like not only in terms of it being a successful enough television show that it brought in revenue to the company, but also was an entry point as a way for people to, to understand what it is. And I do think that at this point, now you kind of have to like if you're not trying to do a reality show, a documentary reality show that showcases your stars, that showcases uh, 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 for for a novice person like what your product is like, I think you're 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 probably not doing it right. And, and not for nothing. I think that extends even into the arts. Uh, I think that the, the the biggest boon to the art of magic over the last 10 years has been Penn and Teller doing Fool Us, uh, a show that all but explains every trick on there. Like, like mm. what, what they do is they code it, like, here are seven words you can Google if you want to know how this is done. Yeah. But, but, but uh, by breaking down what goes into uh, uh, what seems like a throwaway, I don't know, it's magic. Uh, uh, but making a competition it, out of it. Correct. Like, it, it, is a very, it is a very thin facade, but there is a competition going on. At correct. Yeah. Cor correct. And, and, then, and then meanwhile, you, you meet the people, you learn the hard work that goes into it. You see like why, uh, because again, you know, it's, it's, it's to their credit that Penn and Teller want to explain why they're impressed with the thing. Right. And in order to do that, you have to elevate literacy I, uh, of magic just a little bit. I think with the sports stuff too also is, uh, you know, having a narrative element like this or, you know, a show or something uh, brings in people who don't have, um, you know, uh, like attachment to their location, right? Like, uh, uh, you know, we have a Formula One team in the US, but now I know most of the teams and I know some of the drivers and I'm starting to have, you know, pick out favorites and yeah. those drivers that I really don't like. and. Um, I think that's what that's what you need as the hook. I think once you have like this is my team, boom, like you you are you are in. 
Um, and it's tough to get through there because you have to get through all of the stuff. How do I watch it? When is it on? Who? What? All, like all this stuff. I, I, I think that's always been the nature of sports, but right. now the idea of a well edited, uh, you know, 10 episode, 30 minutes per session package right. to bring you up to speed is. You know, because you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't need to know nothing about Wilt Chamberlain. Just, you yeah. know. Well, especially in the world of binge. Right. Because they're also eminently bingeable. Right. If you are telling, like, you know, what, what, what goes into a good show. Dynamic characters, big action, and stakes that resolve. Yeah. Sports is great in that it gives you pretty much all that. Especially when you don't have to shoot it in real time. And you have high-definition cameras that can do slow-mo stuff. Even a... Awesome. That's the weird thing about this show. I just, I, it's the only Netflix show that I've seen that is partially in 60 frames per second. Ooh. And so they do the like the Netflix opening graphic in 60 frames per second. Oh, and it really? looks really weird. Yeah. It looks really weird. But 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 there is something about sports because uh, mm. um uh, uh forgive me for working blue, but like sports and pornography are the only things where you really want them to the the TV to look like it's a window to real things that are happening. Everything mm, else, sure. you want the, 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 the fantastical aspect that 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second gives you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, well, and even in, in, in uh, 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 sports, we, yeah, we, we almost want more hyper real, you know, like, like a lot of those, those big 8K cameras are now like mainstays and uh, uh, you know, various different athletic events, but and with like Formula One, like you, they tap into all of the cameras. All of the cars have cameras. Yeah. All of the radios, they, they you can in, hear they, everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we, you know, we tried to watch the Belgian Grand Prix this weekend, and it got rained out. But we, for those like three or four hours, we were waiting. God, it was. It felt like forever. Oh, um, like how realistic were those raindrops? <laughs> they look like, oh my god! It's like we're being rained on. But it, w but it was cool to like see so much coverage that they had and see, you know, oh, they're trying to fix this car in time, and oh, they're this is these two, you know, this is the team and the officials talking about the weather. Like, like it was a lot of access that you wouldn't get at like football. Yeah, it's interesting, and that's and that that's that's the big question in terms of presentation is exactly how much you want to give and and who wants it, who doesn't want it. You know, uh, uh, I'm sure in in football it might be very interesting to some people to hear the plays being called mm. right and exactly what the plays names are, and so the, the 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 announcers would know what's coming or what's like what play is being run before it it, it happens, but the coaches wouldn't, and so it's like. F1 and and NASCAR have a, a an advantage there in that they're able to just say, ah, these are the rules. Congratulations. Everything you're saying is being recorded. If you don't like it, pound sand. Can can I ask a really dumb question? Sure. Uh, in football, do they still do huddles or is everything just radios? Uh, both. Both, yeah. Yeah. So so they it, still they will gather well, no, no, no. together. Not so, a so, lot. So you will, will you will huddle in. Yeah. So only the quarterback has a radio in his Got head. it, got it. Okay. So it's like uh uh the quarterback gets the play, huddles up, tells everybody what the play is, and got then it. there's that unless uh either they're in like a hurry up or something like that. In that case the quarterback will just be calling the plays or be getting signals from right, the right, side. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's uh, uh, Formula One colon Drive to Survive. It's on Netflix. It's great. And yeah, that's the other thing. It's, it's short. Like the three seasons they got are 10 episodes or so, and they're a little over a half hour. Uh, so you can you, you can get through it really quick. I, I think it's really cool. Cool beans. Uh, well, Andrew had to drop off for a thing, but uh, thank you so much for joining us here on the Weird Things podcast, everybody. It's been weird. He won the contest. He did. The bean contest. <laughs> uh, uh, we do. Do we want to do a short after things or yeah? Call we'll it do or? a short after things because we got a letter that Andrew did pass on. So, cool. All right. Uh, so good, just one second. Take a break right now. Yep. He's like, "Hi, Justin. What's up, Holmes?" Ah, uh, uh. uh, okay. This is a good question too. Uh, a good question, and we can keep it keep it pretty trim. Nice. Uh, and yeah, we won't have Andrew for after things, and we'll have a short after things, so Justin can get out of here. Uh, but we got a good we got a good one. We got a good one here. Um. Yeah. 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 Um. I'm curious to see if you like hard knocks. 
I feel like you might really like Hard Knocks because, uh, but but then again, I don't know whether or not it's gonna be one of those things where, like, when I first was getting into like rap music as a kid, mm. I was then like, oh, everybody references all these like great old artists and everything, and then you listen to old rap albums and you're like, oh, this is kind of hokey. Like that's kind of aged I out guess, of us. I guess it makes sense when you were the first person ever to do that, but now mm. there's an entire genre that like takes and mixes and and has right. built on top of it. So I'm curious to know whether, like, if you're watching Hard Knocks and you, like, notice a lot of these tricks and editing things and everything that, like, have now become just standard. Uh, yeah. uh, if you're, if you're going to be like, oh, wow, classic for a reason or, like, I don't know, it seems a little contrived. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to give it a shot. I think I'm almost done with, se- with the, the last season of Drive to Survive, so uh, I can probably jump over to Hard Knocks. I would almost, I'd be curious, I don't know whether or not it would be better to give you the most recent season like, oh right or just, do like or, or to find one from like the past where uh it was just a classic like the team was just a mess and the coach is a lunatic and and yeah. like because those have happened i'll probably periodically i will probably go back to that los angeles uh season. Thing is, i don't know if i if you should because because i, I think it sucks oh really uh well because that was the covid guess- season and so it's yeah. all about just like covid regulations and and but then again i haven't seen it so but, but char- the chargers had that new quarterback but I, yeah actually but he's I, also I, not going to be a part of it because that was i mean I, I, i'm sure they're going to talk about it no. yeah but he was set to be on the bench the entire season so, until they accidentally knife their starting quarterback right is is Hard Knocks only the training period? It doesn't yes. actually cover the season. It's oh, that's okay. it. It's all about training camp. It ends as the team is ready to go into the season. Oh, okay, that makes more sense because I thought it was a a season. No, it was during the season. No, no that makes sense. okay. No, then no, yeah. No. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, I'll I'll report back. And- no, it's all it's all about everybody getting back to work and like the season that 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 was, and and what will be again. <laughs> Yeah, they, they really, in Drive to Survive, they really don't spend any time really at all with the COVID stuff. Like, the first race gets canceled, and then they're just wearing masks the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> we go so fast, COVID cannot catch up. It's it's interesting, because I think Formula One is a part of this show, like, is a, works a with partner. Netflix. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure they have to. And so I think there's a good amount of massaging that uh yes uh, spoiler <laughs> alert for all of these sports documentaries uh they nothing is getting out that will embarrass the product yeah uh justin do you need a break nope okay well let's do some after things then why don't yeah. we yeah all right i'll bring us in for after things here in three two hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the after things podcast i'm bryce castillo joined as always with brian brushwood hello and justin robert young hey hello. Uh, Andrew will be back on the show eventually, I promise. Eventually. <laughs> he had a busy, he had a work thing he had to do. Uh, but we got a letter that was sent in from Nick uh, here about uh, about life goals. I'll read it here. Nick says, hi, all. Thank you all so much for the great podcast and especially the work you do on After Things. Ah, taking control of my email list really uh, let us weather the COVID shutdowns a lot better than others in my industry, which is school photos, taking school photos. Uh, After Things has been super helpful for growing my business, and I love the show. On a lot of the episodes, you talk about planning and have made mention of Brian's dream board, possibly. I was wondering if you can go into detail, more detail, of how you, uh, quote-unquote, designed your lifestyle or made very long-term goals. Uh, Someday, I would like to, uh, I would really like to wake up in a big house and be rich like OMG Chad, but maybe not in Dallas. (laughs) Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Nick. First of all, good call on anti-Dallas sentiment. Yeah, yeah. Dallas. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, if I was to guess, I think what he's describing is... Um, uh, 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 was there a name for that board? Because I've seen it, um, but I don't, I've don't. i never heard it called a dream board. Yeah, but... Uh, like well, a goal. It's, it's basically... Um, a, 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 this is one of the rare moments where I will recommend a summary over the actual book. Uh, uh, David Rowan, who later I hired ran a podcast for a little bit called Minimum, where he would uh, uh, basically condense hours and hours of self-help entrepreneur uh, 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 podcasts into 15 minutes. And that usually meant about about five minutes uh, uh, for each thing. Uh, He took an appearance by the author of the guy who wrote the book, The One Thing, that was a New York Times bestseller. And his, his summary, I think... 
for me was superior to the book itself because I ended up reading the book and it didn't it didn't land with me uh, with quite the punch that uh, David Rowan's analysis did. And basically, the the story is you come up with a forever goal, a five year goal, a one year goal, and then a one month goal, a one week goal, and so on. Um, uh, because and and eventually you get to a point where like uh, 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 so 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 once you have a vision of where you want to be in five years, uh, this is how empires are born. Basically, is you you have a vision of uh, eventually I want to be Penn and Teller. Eventually I want to be a, a Esquire magazine. Eventually I want to be the New York Times or, or what have you. Uh, and then you work backwards from there. Uh, you, you write out what are all the things you have, how large is your staff, what, uh, 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 what's your budget, how many people are you reaching, do you have video content, is it, is it uh, written content only? And then you go back, you're like, okay, if that happens, let's go back, what does that look like five years from now? And then maybe it's a lesser version of it. It's like, uh, oh, uh, well, at that point, I've got 30 to 35 people on staff. We've got X, Y, and Z or whatever. Then you're like, great. If that were to happen, what must things look like at the one-year mark? And then it's like, well, at one year, I mean, uh, I guess I got two or three people working for me. By then, we figured out kind of our unique niche uh, uh, we're developing talent. We have an audience of about a hundred thousand people, and then and then and there's like great. Now you go down to one month, and eventually you end up with like, uh, okay, for the one month goal or the six month goal or whatever it is. Now you find yourself writing down specific things. What are the things that have to happen between now and six months from now for you to make that goal possible? And all of a sudden you're writing down a bunch of eminently achievable, very small segments. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, there, there's some of that that is happening to me now because all of a sudden there's uh, possibilities that were never on the menu before, specifically because Justin lives here in Austin now and, and because we are developing a uh, world's greatest con. Let's, let's take that for example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're very, very proud of season one of world's greatest con. And I'm not saying this is our plan, but hypothetically, let's say I imagined a series of movies about World's Greatest Con or, sure. a, or a TV show based on it. Uh, they, they would be as big as the oceans. Uh, and there uh, would be 13 of them. <laughs> uh, are there 13 oceans? I think the oh, oceans, oh, oceans, oceans, oceans films. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. <laughs> uh, uh, Rihanna but, but, was but, in one but of those. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but uh, I would say, uh, okay, well, then uh, clearly we would have to have more than one story because so far we've only told one story on World's Greatest Con. Hmm. So we have to have many, many stories to, to pick from. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you could think of a visual template and you could think about uh, 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 what what is a what type of story will reach the most number of people. So by beginning with the ending in mind, it allows you to make tangible moves all the way down to like uh, 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 an atomic unit would be, uh, oh, call Justin right now and pitch him on these three ideas yeah and have a discussion about whether or not they belong in world's greatest con or not yeah and then uh and 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 so by by starting with a forever goal mm -hmm. and then working your way back to where do i need to be in six months and and i think for us it's not exactly a spoiler we know that we need to uh definitely have one more season released possibly uh if if we can do it have two or but or at least be working on a third season by by six months from now but but all of a sudden we're talking about tangible things and it causes me to you know do little silly things like write down notes and call you and say what about this for a season three sure yeah i think for me i'm i'm very 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 hyper focused less on the big goal and more on the 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 48 hours to a week to a month kind of element. I, I think that's oftentimes whenever we think about, at least for me, everybody full, you know, uh, 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 your pre mileage may vary. Yeah. Preamble here that like uh, everybody's brain chemistry is different. Everybody's conception of the world is different. So it's like what, yeah, your mileage may vary. Uh, 
I don't like setting gigantic goals because I am like, well, what? Like, I, I never know how much weight to put behind them mm-hmm. because it's like, all right, this is a gigantic goal for my life. So it's like for the same reason why I don't have tattoos because I don't know that that I'm going to be cool with this tattoo for for more than the second at, that that it's on me. I think like the idea of gigantic goals are like okay, so am I am I in this forever? Every time when I think it sucks, does that mean I need to beat it out of me? Does that mean that I need to listen to myself and change the goal? So instead. I know a vague direction that I want to go. I want to be respected as an artist. I'd like to be financially independent. I'd like to uh, uh, work in a collaborative environment with my friends, right? Now, wherever that lands, whether that's on The Tonight Show, whether that's uh, as the CEO of a podcast company, I feel like there are different variants of my life, all of which would be very happy as long as these core tenants in in my existence are, are, are you know, tended to. And so... What I instead like to do is be hyper focused on what do I got to do today? What do I got to do this week? And so I'm very, very big uh, over the last two years or so on a whiteboard. Every morning on the whiteboard, I fill out my schedule, uh, even if it's already on a calendar. In fact, I'll open up my Google calendar. I will look at it and then write out my schedule on the whiteboard. I've got things that I always do that are repeated that I'll just slide little tiles in. Uh, so it's easier to do, but at least now I've I've made a commitment to my day. Next to that, I've got uh, whenever I think of something, I'll write down uh, uh, that this thing needs to be done. And then the key is whenever you see a task, a little barnacle task that's kind of been there staring you in the eye for mm-hmm. for a little while, mm-hmm. the next move is is to break that break that up. So if 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 I have what is make the first step, the second step? If, I, if step. I have make a budget, then, and that's just sitting there staring me in the face, scrub that off and say, uh, uh, pull all of my bank records. Right, right. right? Uh, uh, find out how much I spent uh, last year. Exactly. Two do, years and, ago, and so this years. always happens with my yeah. taxes. It'll just, it'll eventually get to do January through March. Like, right. Or it's like, even if it needs or to just break, find out one month. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, even if you have to break it down to open a spreadsheet and, and call it taxes, like, and, and, and allow you to make a check mark and then set another, another thing, even if you got to crawl. Uh, that is one of my favorite uh, success stories is I think it's a, a Tony Robbins chestnut. Uh, he had somebody who was trying to get in shape or whatever. And, and it's like, go for, go for a run. Okay. Go for a walk. Uh, just go outside, just do whatever. And then finally uh, uh, th- what cracked the nut was he said, just promise me, one day you're going to put on your walking clothes. And, and once she put on her walking clothes, he, he was like, well, did you put on your walking clothes? And she goes, yes. And, and I'm like, how did that? And she goes, I walked five miles. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, once you've done that one part, it's mm-hmm. like, well, it's dumb to do this and not do the rest of it. So, so, but, right. but that first part is so agonizing and, to and, get started and we're focusing on the short term because that momentum is so valuable oh it's it it's all of it it's all of it. It, it that's why to me i almost think that it's it's i know for some people it is very motivating to have a north star to look you know down you know look look look, Wait, look and, 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 and see something to walk as, toward. as an example of that uh, uh when i bought this property one of the first things i said was oh my god there's going to be a total solar eclipse five and a half years from now yeah and i had a vision in this dried out pond it's like this pond will be restored it'll be swimmable it'll be my yeah. own personal barton springs i'm gonna lay here and look up at the sky uh on a former cult compound and watch it happen now uh truthfully i have no control over the weather that day it may just be cloudy and it may not happen but along the way like i'm already feeling the itch of like man we only got three and a half years i kind of need to get that thing up to speed yeah if, i mean if well, this is well let me, let me let me take the other position though is yeah. that for some people for, so for you right. having that thing is helpful correct uh for me it has not it mm. it it cripples me because i'm worried about whether or not i'm walking the right direction it it, it cripples me because i i i am uh, uh i'm one of those guys that can't look at road signs when i'm on a long road trip or else i'll, I'll just start doing the math in my head about how long i'm going to be in the car and everything goes a lot slower right mm. so it's like 
the machine. Focus on the machine. You are you are your own machine right now. When do you operate at maximum efficiency? When do you operate at minimum efficiency? And what are you directing your machine to do? Is it a thing that you like? Is it a thing for money? Is it a thing for, for a million different reasons? Is it the, the care and love of your friends and family and community? Understand that that everything is optimizable within yourself. And to me, that's where at the very least having the radar of here's my day, here are my tasks, that makes everything better. And then at that point, that's where I started to build more of a long-term thing. Because then I was like, okay, so if I write these scripts and I do these reads and then I edit this stuff, like that means realistically we could have this done by, you know, I could have this, this podcast series done by blank time right and so now that once i realistically set that and i had the faith in myself that i knew that this was all realistic then like now that was a north star that i trusted now like there's there's you know, dates that i have on my calendar that are getting terrifyingly close that i'm like all right time does time to knock it off on thinking that i need to read everything and time to start writing yeah i think that in my heart, I'm a little bit closer to, uh, you know, shoot for the stars. And if, if you get bored halfway there, at least you're on the moon, you know, it's yeah. like, a, like, I have no problem giving up and, and pivoting what my dream is. And so likewise, uh, 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 I mean, going all the way back to the beginning, it's like, you know, the dream, of course, would be to be on the Tonight Show. Uh, and it turns out that trying to get on the Tonight Show writ large, is what got me on the Roseanne show, but still made it on the Roseanne show. And then when I asked a friend, you know, what do I do next? He was like, well, did the first thing work? And I'm like, yeah, he's like, then you do the same thing again. Yeah. I'm like, oh, and, and eventually that did get me on the tonight show. Right. Yeah. Well, let's and, take, let's and, take the tonight show. How did, cause Nick asks like, how, how do you conceptualize these very long-term goals? How, what, what was it? Do, do you remember something that sparked you to be like, that is the next big thing I need to do? Or that's that's the big thing I would aspire to do. So so uh, uh, did you see it, another magician? On yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, 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 in this case, it would have been uh, long before I had read the one thing or heard David Rowan's uh, synopsis of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I I understood there was a gap between where I was and the credentials that I needed to have in order to get a lot more college shows. And one of those things was TV appearances because uh, in a pre-internet era, and I cannot emphasize this enough, like there was a time before social media, there was a time before YouTube when just flat out nobody could see your show unless you mailed them a VHS tape, in which right. case you needed them to watch the VHS tape. Uh, and they might only watch the first 20 seconds of it. So. Uh, 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 working backwards, it was like, okay, so what do, uh, what do I want uh, to get booked up at colleges? What are, what do I need to get there? Credentials, something that that instantly says this guy's no joke. Uh, uh, nobody will be made the sucker if we hire him. Uh, what's a way to do that? TV, great. Uh, uh, what level of TV? Uh, well, ideally, you know, there, you know, and then you arrange in your mind daytime television versus late night tel television and so on. And then it's like, okay, now let's go to the even smaller bit. Uh, uh, the people who are booking these things, what do they want? They want their job to be easy. So, uh, 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 number one, don't send them a, a, a 40 minute tape of a stage show and say, Fast forward to yeah. thirty three minutes. The That's the parts, good part. The best part's at minute seventeen. Right, exactly. But it was it was a pragmatic goal for you to be on the Tonight Show. Cor uh, cor cor correct, but and which meant that I had to do the pragmatic goal of editing everything down to a, a, a ten to fifteen minute reel, yeah. which also meant. Like these are very, very people. They need something that's going to grab their attention. And eventually I go to Costco and I buy a whole bunch of uh, 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 tubs of atomic fireballs and I take VHS tapes and I put a sticker on the side that say, think these are hot, try eating fire. Brian Brushman right. eats fire and does other stuff. So, uh, and, and then, and then, and then, uh, you know, $500 of shipping to package and all that stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it, by working backwards, you eventually get to these atomic units of action. And I think that that's, that's where both of us agree. Justin is, is that that's where the magic happens is, is 
from going from zero to one and whether you start at zero and go to one day after day and build up to something. Uh, in my case, I'm, I'm more in favor of having a vision of what yeah. I'm aiming for work and then breaking it down to the atomic unit. But, but both of us in are in complete alignment in that, <laughs> that atomic unit, you got to do the thing. You got to flip that switch product. Uh, that's it. Make, Things make things and finish things. Yeah, make things and finish things. One of the the the, the, the guiding elements of my life was uh, uh, Steve Jobs' quote: "Real artist ship." Like mm -hmm. that's that's it. And and don't worry if it sucks. It's always gonna suck. It's always like everything that you do is going to be uh, uh, something that you will hopefully do better next time. Like just go 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 sure. finish a thing. That's it. Can, so we, we've kind of talked about zero to one, right? Yeah. How to take your long-term goal and and build, and start, you know, get that initial momentum. But I, I I get the sense that from Nick's letter, he really wants to know how to even figure out what how, we, how, we, we how, talked about zero. To, think, I, I, we I, talked I, about I think, zero to one, and I, I think no, Nick no. wants to know w w zero or one well, to a no, million. No, I think, I think what, what, okay. what Brian and I have, have have done two different versions of that, right? Mm -hmm. So it really depends again on your personality. Brian is saying, uh, uh, start with a vision, have a clear fantasy in your mind mm -hmm. of you at an indeterminate future age, uh, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, f forever forward. Let, let, it, let it be, let it be big, loud, childish, selfish, like just the immediate, like see want, like, right. you know, let right. it be right. that. Right. Exactly. And for me, that vision was uh, in a lake that did not exist, uh, 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 that still does not exist, looking at a an eclipse. That, sure, that but I, I would say Penn and Teller, right? Like, right. I, I, as, sure, as, sure. As, as as you know, you are you are progressing in magic. You're sure. like, cool. This is the genre. Who do I want to be? And you scan, and you're like them. Right. Like I like that they're smart. I like that they're funny. I like the fact that they're respected. I like the fact that uh, uh, they they consort well, and, with and, rock and, stars and, and artists. You could also break out the fact that uh, 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 without ascribing anything specific about their act, kind of like the uh, red letter media exercise, without mentioning what they look like, what they're dressed sure. as, or whatever, describe them. And and it's someone like, might say a brand. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, well, uh, I wouldn't in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh but, but the uh, <laughs> boy, inside baseball uh uh, uh but, but but i i would say countercultural within magic uh yeah. surprise deception uh with um a, a a place to see them live but also with a television presence with a, a, a you know some kind of sales presence and so on yeah uh, et cetera et cetera et cetera like you can break everything down when you start with that big vision as long as you divorce it from the specifics of what you're modeling. Yeah. And then my, so, so Brian is saying like gut, gut, like there's no wrong answer. Just literally like snap it out. If you can't uh, uh, think of it, then, then uh, you're trying too hard. Make it, make it easier on yourself. Say like, I want to be King Marshmallow of the, the chocolate factory or whatever. Like right. uh, what I'm saying is you don't need to know it. So for if you are like more like me and uh, uh, and and you, like that terrifies you, the idea of of even putting the emotional weight on something, a, a goal like that terrifies you, then think of the the things that you enjoy doing. And if I think you're past the age of 25, you probably have at least some kind of sense of what you like, what you don't like, jobs you've liked jobs you haven't liked, relationships you've liked, relationships you haven't liked. Uh, and, and, and now just try to think of, okay, uh, if, I'm in, if I'm indulging these things, what are the possible paths mm. that I could possibly... How could I get even more enjoyment out of this and what needs to happen? And, and, and where, where would I land? Yeah. Like, like, let's say that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm you know, uh, uh, I've always known that I've wanted to be in creation of some kind and and comedy will always be a part of it right so where does that land me all right writer's room in la like hosting a a television show doing a youtube series like there's a million different things that that i could think of and i and when i think of all those i'd be like oh that'd be fun that'd be cool 
like, I, I, I like that. So I don't have one goal of like, I want to be Johnny Carson, but I've got a lot of different paths that like, if I, if, if the work is good, uh, then I will be able to land there. And like, now I'm mostly focused on building the vehicle that will get me there. So, so mine is a little bit more of a, a, a obtuse idea because emotionally the concept of putting that much like even in my head as a motivational thing like uh that much weight on on an end goal is is counterproductive for me uh uh for brian it is it is the opposite he would rather say like let's that that's it and now let's break down everything from there and i think that that's indicative of the fact that there's no one way to eat a reese's when it comes to this shit yeah uh and uh i i suppose uh if it's worth noting that to be honest, that's kind of what brought me to magic. I, I am fortunate in that I like magic, but I don't love magic. People who love magic tend to be kind of creepy and weird. And they're very and, precious about it. Exactly. Uh, my vision, even in my, you know, at the age of 20 is I love the idea of me on a stage and 200 people standing up and clapping for me. Yeah. What are various ways I can get there? And I'm like, well, magic, you, Seemed to know a bit of magic and was like, great, let's, let's go. That gets me closer to that vision. And, and again, I think I'm going to say it. So it sounds bad, childish and selfish, <laughs> like, yep. like, like let those allow those goals to be that. And, and, and you know, that it doesn't have to be in polite society. You don't have to tell yourself, well, I really want to feed the world and the world like, no, I want to be, rich and 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 powerful and have and and tan and healthy and and, and, and by by the way uh money never entered the equation until we got pregnant with our third daughter and you can see the video where i straight up show an ultrasound and say uh the rules are different now i have to open a magic store would you like to contribute yeah i'm gonna start selling magic stuff on the internet and uh, and and it's 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 been very good in that it's allowed us to you know continue and build and all of this stuff. Yeah. So uh, you could be flexible, but you know, uh, uh, yeah. Justin, I know you have to go. Do you have yes. any last thoughts? Uh, uh, oh, just produce things. Mm. Like honestly, all of this zero is, to one. All of this is great. It's great to talk about. It's great to talk about process. Don't get bogged down in process. Just because uh, 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 within that, within everything I've just said, like. It, it there's a million steps of exactly how everybody gets up and finishes a project. And, and so learn yours as fast as possible. Uh, as we wrap up, uh, 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 think about it in terms of uh, if, if you say, I want to swim in the Pacific ocean, then you got to decide what path you're going to take and all that stuff. Uh, Justin, as, as I understand his point is uh, every day I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to follow the setting sun. And guess what? The end result of that is one day you're up to your knees in salt water because you're standing in the Pacific Ocean. So it's like there's there's different ways to go about it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, uh, thank you, Nick, for sending that in. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you've got uh, a letter you'd like to send into the After Things program, neshcom at gmail.com. Put After Things in the subject line. Uh, well, that'll do it for After Things today. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be we talking to you next time. It's been After. Hell yeah. Cool. All righty, everyone. Thank you right. so much for joining us here on After Things. Yeah, th uh, uh, don't miss your thing. Uh, thank you so much. We will be back in a couple hours with Cord Killers. I believe we've got uh, Meryl Barr possibly on the show. So that's coming up. Uh, um, uh, yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in. Stick around for that. Uh, and yeah, have a good rest of your Monday. <laughs>